Hello and good morning and welcome to the Elam Pentecostal Church, Leicester and our daily devotional time. I've been travelled through uh, the tabernacle uh, from the outside in, we now find ourselves in the holy place which basically typifies heaven with its blue, purple and, and scarlet hangings embroidered with angelic brilliance. It, it gives the sense of actually being in heaven itself and as we walked through a couple of days ago we noticed on our left hand side the menorah or the uh, golden candlestick the only source of life and, and we saw there that it, it in many ways it, it, it basically represents Jesus as the light of the world him as a vine and us as the branches that come off of it and so the first thing we saw then on the left hand side was the menorah or the golden candlestick. Now, if you looked on the right hand side, you would see uh, something else known as the table of showbread. Now in Hebrews chapter eight and verses four to five, it says everything in the tabernacle has its, uh, it's a shadow of things that are in heaven. And it's very clear when you look at the book of Revelation and, and, and John's vision, uh, you see the menorah and you see the, the golden altar and you see the things in the tabernacle um, there in heaven. But one thing you don't actually see is the table of showbread. And yet, in, in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 45, it said everything that's in the tabernacle uh, represents in as a shadow of things that are in heaven. So we're going to look at this today and hopefully come to a conclusion. So on the left hand side as you walk in you've got the, the golden candlestick, the only source of light. Then on the right hand side you've got the table of showbread which was roughly three foot long, uh, two foot high and about a foot and a half in depth. Uh, made of um, wood uh, and plated on the outside with pure gold. And on that table were 12 small loaves of bread um, and they were put in two groups of six. And so what is it? Uh, what does it represent? What is the symbolism of it? Well, if we turn in our Bibles to Exodus, Exodus 25 and verse 23, this is God speaking to Moses and telling him how he wants this table made. And in verse 23 of Exodus chapter 25, it says, Thou shalt make also a table of shittim wood. Two cubits shall be the length thereof, and a cubit the breadth, therefore, and a cubit and a half the height. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold, and make there to a crown of gold round about. And thou shalt make unto it a border of a handbreadth around about, and thou shalt make a golden crown to the border thereof round about. And thou shalt make for it four rings of gold, and put the rings in the four corners that are on the four feet thereof. Over against the border shall the rings for the places, and the staves to bear the table. And thou shalt make the staves of shitting wood, and overlay them with gold, that the table may be borne with them. And thou shalt make the dishes thereof, and the spoons thereof, and the covers thereof, and the bowls thereof, to cover with all of pure gold shalt thou make them. And thou shalt set upon the table showbread before me always. Now the twelve loaves, uh, most commentators would agree, represented the twelve tribes of Israel before the presence of God. So that's what we need to have in mind. Uh, this is basically a table laid with 12 loaves in two lots of six, and six in the Bible represents man, but 12 in the Bible uh, represents spiritual governance. And so basically you've got 12 loaves in two groups of six on a golden table in the presence of God, always before the presence of God. God. So what does this represent and where is its counterpart in heaven? Well let's look forward uh, 
in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 16. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 16. This is what the word of God says. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? Now Jesus referred to himself whilst he was on earth as the bread of life. He represented himself as the uh, the light of life and the light of the world and now he also refers to himself as the bread of life and whoever partakes of this bread he said will never go hungry and basically what he's speaking about is the spiritual hunger he's not speaking about physical hunger but spiritual hunger because there's a physical side of our nature and a spiritual side of our nature and if you want to be satisfied in life, deep within your soul and your heart, then Jesus says, come to me, because I am the bread of life. And in me, you will never hunger. You will be satisfied spiritually. You will be full. You will be content. Why? Because you have peace with God through Jesus Christ and his death upon the cross. So Jesus then refers to himself as the bread of life but the question here is where does in heaven does the table actually appear because you won't find anywhere a table in heaven you know in any of the scriptures in John's vision any vision that anybody has ever had in the Bible concerning heaven you won't see a table there but it should be there because everything in the tabernacle, the Bible says, represents that which is in heaven. What you do see in heaven, in John's vision, in, in Revelation, are 24 elders. But those 24 elders are not represented in the tabernacle. So why isn't the showbread or the table of showbread represented in heaven? Why don't we see it? Also, why don't we see the 24 elders represented in the tabernacle seeing that the bible says that all the things in the tabernacle represent those things that are in heaven unless of course um, there is a link between the two well let's turn to revelation and chapter 5 and verse 9 revelation chapter 5 and verse 9 Or verse 8 rather. And when he, that's the Lamb of God, that's Jesus, this is in John's vision in Revelation. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of the elders, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Now, there's been a lot of debate about the 24 elders. Who are they? Who, who do they represent? Well, you don't see them in the tabernacle and you should. You don't see the table of showbread in heaven either. So surely... There must be a link between the two. They're not angelic beings because angelic beings cannot be redeemed. And yet they sing a song saying, you have redeemed us. So they're not angelic beings. They're also called elders and elders are never, uh, sorry, angelic beings are never called or referred to as elders. So these are People, these are people, uh, they are elders before God. They're not uh, the disciples because John is seeing this and if, and if he did he'd be looking at it himself. So they're not disciples but they are godly men who have lived uh, in the past and have been redeemed through 
Christ. You see, both those believers before Christ came and those after, we are all redeemed through Christ. Jesus is the redeemer of both those under the old covenant and the new because the Bible says that we all, they all, those in the wilderness, um, Israel as a whole, all drank from the same spiritual rock, which is Christ. So here we have these uh, 24 elders referring to themselves as redeemed and also carrying the prayers of the saints. So they are before God, if you like. They are seem to be seem to be praying on behalf of the church. They seem to be praying on behalf of Christian believers. They are representing Christian believers before God in the same way that the table of showbread uh, represented the 12 tribes of Israel. Now we have 24 elders that seem to be representing God's people. Now, we have 12 tribes of Israel under the Old Covenant. But we also have the 12 disciples as well. So if you put 12 and 12 together, you made 24. It's a significant number. There are 24 elders. Now when Judas died and committed suicide, only one could take his place according to the Psalms. That's why when they had two candidates, they could only choose one instead of both. Why? Because 12 is a number. It's a specific number. It's a number of spiritual governors. And so it seems then that these 20, and it would make sense that the table of showbread really, uh, its counterpart, is these 24 elders. But at the time of the table of showbread there in the tabernacle, there would have only been 12 elders. You see, heaven doesn't always stay the same. Heaven itself changes. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. But heaven does change. Heaven changes. You know, we've now got the Lamb of God who was slain before the foundation of the world. You know, at one time, uh, there, there was, there was a, a multitude of, of angels, which there are, but now a third of those angels are not in heaven anymore. You know, heaven evolves. Heaven expands. You know, Christians are absent from the body but present with the Lord on a daily basis. So heaven is expanding all the time. So I think it makes sense to think that at one point in time under the Old Covenant with the table of showbread, there were 12 elders before the throne of God. But now with the New Covenant, there are 24 elders, 2 times 12. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples, and these elders seem to be representing the church or believers throughout the ages in the presence of God, like the table of the presence or the table of showbread. Because the Bible clearly says, that which you see in the tabernacle is found in heaven, but you don't see a table in heaven. The 24 elders, you don't see them in the tabernacle either. So there must surely be a link. That's the way I see it anyway. You might have different ideas to that. But you'll notice there in, in verse 8 of Revelation chapter 5, it says they, they have harps and golden vials full of the odours which are the prayers. So they are quite literally carrying the prayers of the, of the saints. So we don't really know exactly what role they have. But they do seem in some way to represent God's people throughout the ages. So all believers can be assured that they are seen and that they are heard and that they are represented before God and that we are ever before the face of God and it seems that it's through these 24 elders that the people, that the church of Jesus Christ and all believers throughout all ages are represented. You know, we have Christ, the bread of life, who pleads our case and is our intercessor before God. We also have these 
uh, 24 elders who also have some part to play uh, on behalf of us before God and in his presence. So we can thank God today and we can all thank God today as individual believers and a church that we are represented before the Lord of heaven and earth. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you that you know our goings and toings and froings. You know everything about us. But Lord, we also recognise that we are represented in heaven itself by the Lord Jesus himself, who is our great intercessor, but also, it seems, by these 24 elders as well. We thank you, Lord, that we are ever before your presence and our prayers are always heard in your presence as well. Help us to remember that, that this day as we go about our daily business. For, Lord, we ask this in Jesus' name.